I want all the unleashed people, if you could come up on stage right now, just come out of your seats and just gather up and squash up on stage. And I want us as a church now to reach out. As you know, this is a big part of what we do. And again, having an impact right around the nation. And so I want to pray for these people from all over New Zealand, from Otaltel, down the South Island, from Pairoa, from Fokatane, from, from all over, from, from even from Auckland. And then, but from for small towns, all types of ministries, right across New Zealand. Kaikoura, Wanaka, Timaru. Come on, all our Rotorua, yeah, yeah. Great mouth, great mouth, pastors, great mouth, great mouth. So all over the place. But I want you to stretch out your hands right now, and we're going to pray for them, and just pray as they launch out on their ministry. This seals their journey this week. This service and the next service we will do this. Stretch out your hands. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for every single one of these churches and the towns that they represent and the cities that they represent. We would ask, we would ask, Spirit of God, that, Father, you would seal all that has taken place this week. We join with all our prayers together. Hear our prayers for these ministers of the gospel. Whatever department, whatever area they find themselves, whether it be youth ministry, children's ministry, whatever it is, we pray. Father God, in a fresh anointing on them all. New churches, older churches, churches just coming into new life. We pray your blessing on them, the blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Give these guys his hand a good of the week. All right, you can slip off. And I want the Kingdom Brotherhood guys to stay here. Stay here. Stay here, Kingdom Brotherhood. And get them some mics or whatever. There's a couple of mics. Yeah, some of you will know Lucky, uh, who you've seen his video and stuff. So these are some of the, some of the, the brothers. If you, if you were coming and going, oh, who's that in church today? These are the Kingdom Brothers. And I've asked them to just take a few minutes and just share uh, some things. There's a couple of mics. Here's a mic. Here's a mic. There's a mic. Turn to the person next to you and say they're very handsome guys. Come on. All right. All right. I don't know who, need, who needs a mic. Oh, you just one or whatever. There, there's a couple there if you want it. So, um, yeah, just go. Go for it. Yeah. Take that one. If it doesn't work, just take that one. One of these. There you go. That'll work. Um, so it should work. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, it's working. Okay. <laughs> hey, um, we didn't sort of practice this part of it, but um, <laughs> yeah, Kingdom Brotherhood. I suppose um, it's it's a, a it's a, a journey of um, letting yourself get unleashed a little bit. Um, it's a journey of um, like setting yourself free like Alicia was speaking about. Um, just, um, I don't know, tearing that veil, killing that old man, and um, just, just what, what's the plan God's got in you? What's the plan who, who's in here? And it's um, dealing with some of that, that stuff, that trauma stuff, that stuff that um, holds us back and we don't even know it's holding us back. That stuff that we just say that... Um, Gee, this is just me. I'm, I'm a bit quiet. I was, I was sharing earlier that um, I used to be a bit of a mute. I used to uh, not, not, I couldn't, you know, sharing news in, in front of a, a classroom used to be like my worst day of my life. <laughs> and um, yeah, God had other plans, eh? You know? <laughs> yeah. To where now they just push me up the front, like, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we've got a big God, and um, he does amazing things just like this. The day I was saved, I, I stood up and, and stood up in front of like a crowd like this and, and said, I want to get into God. That's what I'm here for. And um, I knew that was a miracle. I was straight as an arrow. It was a Sunday morning. It was um, like, gee, it'll take me 10 beers to get up on a dance floor. <laughs> But this, that morning, it was like, nah, make yourself real, Lord. And he did. Yeah. So um, he's got a plan for us all, eh?
So tell us, tell us, tell us a little bit uh, 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 about Kingdom Brotherhood, and just maybe because you got a heart for men, right? So what, what do you want? What would you say to the men here, and how how's Christ changed your life, JP? Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, I was in a real dark place, you know, about four, four and a half years ago. Well, most of my life, to be honest. And um, yeah, I think the the thing for me is the restoration of my family that was ripped apart because of my um, my anger, my addictions, and, um, you know, my darkness. And so for me, when I found Christ, uh, my family actually, um, you know, with my kids, my relationship with my kids got ripped apart. And, um, and my, you know, over the next sort of year, my relationship with my, with my kids was starting to heal to the point where my daughter wasn't really too keen on her dad and um, because of his actions and his aggression um, she ended up coming and living with me for two and a half years oh. and she's only just moved out yeah. <laughs> so you know for me um, for me my heart is for men and seeing you know men get healed so that their families because you know where the you know, if the man is generally good the family follows and so my heart and my passion down in South Island and Christchurch is to run our 12-step program, which takes men, not just men out there, but men in here, because I've found some of the most brokenest men are actually in our church. And um, so that's my heart, is to run through this 12-step program with the men and, and uh, build them and lift them up to be, you know, better, like I said, better fathers, you know, better husbands, better sons, and, um, and it all comes under the name of Jesus Christ, and that's all through him. Amen. Yep. Oh. Hey, um, I was a wounded warrior. Um, I, was, I was pastoring a church for seven years, and um, very similar to the, to the netball, got changed out and went through a bit of hurt. Uh, lucky, come around this time when I was in my desert for about a year, and um, not wanting to do anything, um, just wanting to just plug into God, and I unplugged everything to, to ministry, and lucky said, jump on and support Jason, and help him with Kingdom Brotherhood, and I said, as long as I'm doing nothing, <laughs> um, and so, so, he goes, no, all good brother, all good brother, and, um, but could you just share your story, could you just share your pain, and so, in doing that, I got back on the horse, yeah, yeah. and you know, with the brotherhood, I got healed as a, as a wounded warrior, and, um, and now helping other wounded warriors around New Zealand, yeah. other pastors and leaders that have got burnt, hurt, broken, yeah. and healed. And it's not just, this is not just for, um, for men, it's for women. And um, I, I, know, I know Khan's got an got a, got a awesome story of his family and his wife. So. Awesome. Oh, just before Carl, let, Carl, Carl, Carl you, you tell us a bit about you. Oh, Apart from being incredibly handsome. Oh. <laughs> Kia ora whanau, ko kaua wukluf tuku ingoa, ko moe au me te aroa te maunga, ko haura ki te whenua, ko Pairo kaunga nohua hau. I'm from Pairo, L&P country, obviously. But yeah, well, three years ago, I guess I was saved, you know. I'm an active club member, gang member, some may call it, but I call it a club member. To me, a family member. You know, um, that's exactly what it is. And um, I guess I was saved by Lucky, but um, I guess the Atua worked through him. Uh, Jesus worked through uh, Lucky to get to us because he was someone we could relate to, you know. And, um, well, I guess it, it come, uh, come one day, I was in my darkest patch of all, and um, uh, I saw no way out besides, um, I guess, um, heading down a long track of going to jail, going to prison, you know. And um, I went to go and see Lucky one day. He happened not to be home. And this was a Friday, I guess. And so I went home and mulled what I was, well, I was hatching a plan to do something that would have put me away for a while, you know. And I don't know what it was. I stayed home that whole weekend. And I went over to see Lucky and his neighbour had seen me. I was dressed in all my, all my gang regalia. And um, I got a uh, phone call an hour later from Lucky, and I think, oh, this is out of it, you know. I didn't realise his neighbour had knocked on me saying there's um, a strange man at his doorstep. But yeah, um, 
So he asked me, oh, so how are you going? And I, oh, I played it off like everything was sunny days, you know. <laughs> just walking down the beach like it was good, you know. Life was good. But the whole time I was disguising what was going on. But um, somehow, being lucky, if you met lucky, the uh, man he is, he, um, he felt that something was wrong. And the Monday, he turns up at home. And I seen the car pull up, and I was, ooh, I was gonna go and run and hide. Actually, <laughs> I knew what was coming because he's pretty um, straightforward. Then that's how Jesus made him to be straightforward for people like us, eh? You know. And um, so I didn't. I walked out the door, and he walked in, and he looks at me. He goes, "Bro, there's a dark cloud hanging over your head," and I thought nothing of it. Oh, you don't know what's going on. So um, he actually brought a friend of ours that we um had. I had brought to Lucky and we actually saved and he was um, caught up in a lot of addictions, you know, pee and all that. And he, was, I thought he was worse than me. So when he come into the house and like he was happy, he's back with his family. I felt ashamed to say anything. Excuse the spit. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't say anything um, in front of him and Lucky, or Finn says we know him, <laughs> but Lucky, he, he um, saw that saw um, there was a bit of mamai there so um, he said come down to my house and um, we'll have a korero so I went down there had a talk to him and um, I told him exactly what was going on because I was hearing a lot of um, well darkness you know as, as I've come to found what it was and it was um, oh, the things they were saying is um, you know it's not normal to anybody and um, they were real dark you know so I told him, I was telling him everything like I thought I was the only person in this world that had this issue. And he looks at me and goes, oh, it's that all, bloody hell. I hear that every day. Actually, I heard it this morning. I looked at him <laughs> with a strange look and I go, oh, are you? Are you on what I'm on, mate? <laughs> and funny enough, he goes, actually, bro, wait there. And he um, um, pulled his wife out, Hayley, and um, she come out and he goes, um, are you all good to tell... Haley, exactly what you've told me. And I, oh, well, you know, I'm at the rock bottom, so anything will help. So I told her everything, you know, I'm hearing all these voices in there. And she looks at me being Haley casually, oh, huh. you yeah, know, nah, I heard that just before, actually, just before you turned up. And I'm just looking at these, I'm sure you're on what I'm on. <laughs> you know? So um, what they said is, oh, how about this? We've got a church just down the road from Vince. It's our old Anglican church. So <laughs> I'm not, um, Networking for the Anglicans, by the way. <laughs> um, hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, we go down to the church, and then um, they place their hands on me. It was, it was, it was a real eerie feeling in the um, building, I guess. That's um, the Lord, eh? You know, the Holy Spirit in there. And um, they place their hands on me, and they, whoa, you're burning up. Like, I, I could feel it, and, and I started to sweat profusely, you know. And um, so they do their cut of care. And funny enough, one thing I remember, because um, I think he asked me a while back, um, what do you remember of that day? And I remember him saying to me um, uh, during his cut of care, free him from his chains that have shackled him, you know. And it always sticks in my mind for some crazy reason. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know. But, um, but the minute we said amen, oh, actually, I've got to tell you this because it links up. Before we um, got to the church, um, he he was giving me a bit of um, stick. He goes, how come you haven't called me or rung me or um, replied to any of the messages that I've sent? And I said, I didn't get no messages or um, calls from you. So I gave my phone to Haley, so I, you know, I wasn't lying. So she checks through and she goes, oh, you generally get notifications eh? And um, there was nothing on my phone. So yeah, so we go get to the church and start, um, they start praying on me. But the minute we said amen, no word of a lie, my phone turns on and starts singing, go ding, diddy, ding, ding, diddy, ding. <laughs> and uh, he looks at me and I look at him and, and he goes, have a look at your phone. And sure enough, all those messages and those um, calls that I was meant to receive from him, they weren't there. Oh, they turned up, you know what I mean? And, and he looks at me and goes, now, if that's no proof for you, I don't know what can, you know. Yeah. But um, oh, there's a bit more to it too. Um, actually, um, being the cheeky um, 
fella I am, I was going to say Māori, but cheeky fella. Because um, lucky like gave me case. Now, you can ask for anything in the world. And I was thinking lotto tickets. <laughs> anything in the world. And, uh, and um, so what I did, because um, me and my family were real broken at this point. I mean, my, to the points of um, my partner and kids um, actually sort of, they're about to walk out the door at this time, eh? you know. So I asked them um, to heal me and my family, bring me and my partner closer to them we've ever been in life. And um, just, uh, oh, what about um, let me own my house before I'm 40? <laughs> <laughs> and within six months of that prayer, I could take all three off the box. You know? So, amen. Oh. So you're, you're, you are still, so again, you're still an active gang member still and you're, you're in there. Box. Uh, uh, shining the light for Jesus and uh, things. So yeah, uh, yeah, I am. Well, yeah. funny enough, I got a call from our um, second in command and goes, "Hey, where are you?" <laughs> and I go, "Well, I'm actually um, with these crazy Christians." <laughs> 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 and he goes, "What do you mean?" Oh, I'm, I'm doing a leadership course um, down in Wellington. And he goes, "Oh, mate, we know your journey, so carry on with it. Bring the light yeah. back to us." Awesome. 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 Go, sure. Uh, kia ora whanau. Um, so my, my life was full of brokenness. Um, it was actually uh, from my grandfather. He put a kōrawai around me and he says, here, this is yours. You wear this. You wear this with pride. You wear this and you, and you fulfill what I've given you. Brokenness. Being in a place of, um, of brokenness is, is not a really awesome place to be but um, for 10 years I was molested for 10 years from 6 to 16 my parents uh, my parents split up they they divorced at the age of 9 and um, and I was broken I was so broken I went on a rampage to to fulfill this kōrawai. I got to uh, to the age of 35 and and I just felt I needed to go to church. I said to my wife, I turned to her, I said, I think I need to go to church. I want to go to church. And she was so excited. She was like, oh, okay, where are we going? I said, Solway. Over that five-week period, I... Um, I couldn't stand it anymore. I could feel this pressure coming up. It was building, it was building. And I says, oh, Lord, take me, I'm yours. And when the moment I said that, I, I've never cried so much. I wasn't a cry. I was never cried. My, uh, um, never cried in my life. My, my grandmother died, I didn't cry. My father um, passed on, I didn't cry. All these people that were so significant to me, I never cried. Until I gave my heart to God, I gave him. I gave everything to him. I said, "Lord, take me. I'm yours." And the moment I said that, I've never cried so much. I had a hoop ear coming down my nose, and, and you know that you know that cry that you. <laughs> yeah, I had that too. <laughs> so, and I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm all in. I'm all in for you. I'm sold out for you. Show me your glory. Let me see what you see. Let me hear what you hear. I'm a heart, I'm, I'm my heart's for you. And the journey has, has taken me and brought me into this place here to be able to, to speak to awesome people like you guys. And um, I says to Lucky when he turned up, I was like, man, I like this fella. And he's like, ah. he goes, looks at me and goes, hey, um, do you want to speak on trauma? Yeah, I can, I can speak on that. I was so happy to share it because I wear it on my sleep. I'm not ashamed of, of talking about my past. I can go right back, right up to where I am now. You ask me, I'll tell you. I've got, got nothing to hold back yeah, from God. Because the testimony belongs to him. To, to, share, to share the gospel is, is something that just jumps out. It's like, why hold it back? 
So when I asked um, Lucky, I says, hey, I want your vision. And he shared his vision of Kingdom Brotherhood to me. And I says, can I write a haka? Because I can hear a haka. I can also hear a waiata. So he gave me the blessing to do this. And I, and I took it home and I, and I wrote this, um, this beautiful waiata haka for Kingdom Brotherhood. But it's not only just for for the kingdom, brother, it's for the sisterhood, it's for the community, it's for the people of Aotearoa. Because, because we are we are people that of brokenness. When we were born, we were broken. So if we're broken and we're created by him, wouldn't you go back to the healer to be to be healed? So we're gonna sing this waiata for you guys. And it's it's actually taken us two days to teach uh, the brothers and so yeah we're going to sing it (laughs) (laughs) good training good training I think we're going to um, I think we're going to need this (laughs) to project our voices are children of God who stand upon the rock of Jesus Christ. He is our fortress, our deliverer. Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus Christ. We are the light in the darkness to bring all families who are lost in Aotearoa. Let God of our salvation be exalted. His will be done.
Oh, that was great. Grab a seat. And I want Pastor Bob and Ruth to come here. Uh, but Bobby was, um, uh, we're changing the schedule as we flow. He was due to speak 15 minutes ago. And, uh, but he's speaking in the next service. So everything's going to be different. So you can come into the next service. We've got Jimmy speaking as well. But Pastor uh, Bobby and Ruth uh, are leading a church in Auckland called Connect Church. Oh, what a name, what a name, what a name, what a name. No, that's what it, no, that's another Beyonce song. Uh, um, but again, they, um, no, that's what a man, isn't it? I was, <laughs> but, but, but again, just um, bless, but just to explain something that they were uh, a part of our discipleship training schools that we used to do in India some, I don't know, how long ago was that? Um, Ago, 1998. 23, 23 years ago, he was one of our uh, uh, discipleship training school students um, that we're a part of. And I, I, when I met him in Auckland, he told me, hey, I was one of the students back there. So you never know where you invest, where, where they end up. But the reason I've brought you on stage today, Bobby, is because we know you're coming the journey to come into new life. And we want to make that official today. So there should be something I would like uh, to do. So we've just got this little presentation um, here for, uh, for, for you. That certificate that says you as your church. Don't worry about that. Uh, you and your church are part of the New Life Movement. So I just want to give you that right now. And just say, that's yours. That's yours. Bless you. Bless you. It's all right. God bless. Come on, put your hands together and just say, let's go. Cool. Amen. So if you want to hear him preach, you've got to be in the next service. Just grab a seat, grab a seat. Grab a seat. And, and, and Jimmy's going to be speaking as well. And I pray you enjoy that. That was beautiful, brother. So I, again, it's just a part of letting flow and letting wh whatever God. Were you ministered by those kingdom brothers right there? Did that, did that help you? Did that good? Maybe you need... Maybe you need to know the grace of God and stuff. And maybe you've come here today and you've thought, man, there's no way I could change. I want to tell you, there's some pictures right there you can see with your own eyes. You think God could never change me. Look what he's done with them. If he can do it with them, he can do it with anybody. If he can do it with me, even with you, he can change your life today. Give your life to Christ. Don't, if you're here today and you think, turn to him. Turn away from your sin and follow him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. When they sung in the mall that other day and stood up there and sung Amazing Grace and preached the gospel, they preached the gospel. There was lots of people around there filming. You saw everyone has their thing. They, were, they weren't uh, all part of the group. Just uh, everyone. The food court was like f filming. One person filmed it who was not part of the group and has now been seen by 75,000 People. It's been viewed 75,000 times, has 10,000 likes. It was only 60,000 yesterday. It's now 74,000. Sorry, I was a thousand out. 70, 74,000 people. Is that cool or what? 74,000 people, 10,000 likes as they sung. Amaze in grace. Come on, stand as we close. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And everybody said, Amen.